have just opened a new chapel and a group of evangelists have converted a warehouse into a house of God. But the Anglican parish church is among many in the town now faced with possible closure. James Trollope has this report. Walking away from the Church of England, they raised a million pounds to set up their own evangelical church in a warehouse near Brighton Station. It was a movement of religious fervour 170 years ago which helped pay for Brighton's parish church of St Peter's, designed by Charles Barry, later architect of the Houses of Parliament. Now the church is in such a bad state of repair that half a million pounds is needed to keep it open. What we need to do is to teach people how to give, and we've not been very good at that. On the whole, we've had money from the church commissioners in the past. We know that by the end of the century, every church in the Church of England is going to have to be self-supporting, self-financing. It's a lesson that the 800 regulars of the new Evangelical Church of Christ the King have already learnt. Members are encouraged to give at least 10% of their income to the church. It's given to us and we give to the church to, to help buy, provide for the church, to support the church, to see it maintained. I prefer to give my money to God, um, where I know it will go to poor and needy people, paying for the pastors, paying for obviously the Christ facilities, uh, kiddies facilities, that sort of thing. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Mormons, have also just opened a new centre in Brighton. It cost three quarters of a million pounds. The movement's UK spiritual headquarters is at Lingfield in Surrey. Only those who have given 10% of their income to the church are allowed inside the temple. The Mormons say they're the world's fastest growing religious movement, with a total membership of 9 million and a British membership of 180,000. The church is growing so fast that we almost have to stop people rushing into the water to be baptised. The Mormons have a strict health code. No smoking, no alcohol, no tea, no coffee. And their missionaries, many of whom are trained at Lingfield, also teach a strict moral code which doesn't tolerate sex outside marriage or homosexuality. If we stick to the guidelines and commandments we've been given, then there's no grey. It's black and white. And uh, yes, we're a church of black and white. Uh, that which is good and that which is evil. The family unit is also at the core of the evangelist movement, where the emphasis on the power of faith leaves little room for doubt. And often I think churches have grown empty where there's not been a clear telling out of what Jesus said. And if you haven't any message, if you want to share your doubts, few people will bother across the road to hear you sharing your doubts. They've got enough doubts of their own. I think when they make the kind of statements like uh, give your life to Jesus and all your problems will be answered, they're overselling the gospel. In fact, give your life to Jesus and you may have a lot more problems. I think many of us have discovered that. St Peter's may have some empty pews, but there are 33 other Anglican churches in Brighton. Like St Peter's, many are notable Victorian buildings in need of repair. Clergymen sometimes find themselves more curators than priests. I wasn't ordained to be a curator, and I hate it. Um, I was ordained to care for people, not for buildings. But I recognise that I have a responsibility to keep this building going. The Mormons, meanwhile, plan to build ten new centres a year, including chapels at Eastbourne and Haywards Heath. As for the evangelicals, having converted a Brighton warehouse, they're now making a church out of a sports centre in Hastings.